It is early in the morning. I wrap a towel around my waist and approach the sink. I grab a toothbrush and toothpaste. The tube is empty. The nearest replacement sits on a shelf in our freezing basement. I'm not dressed for the part. George, I yell. Who used all the toothpaste? A sarcastic voice answers from the other side of the door. That's not the point, is it, Dad? George says. The point is how we're going to keep this from happening again. He has me. I have told him countless times how the most productive argument uses future tense, the language of choices and decisions. You're right, I say. You win. Now will you please get me some toothpaste? Sure, George retrieves a tube. Happy that he beat his father at an argument. Did he? What is rhetoric? Rhetoric is the art of persuasion and influence. Friendship, eloquence, and <laughs> whether we are aware of it or not, rhetoric is around us. It plays with our emotions, changes our attitude, talks us into decisions, or not to be, and goads us to buy things. Give it away. As you can see, rhetoric is a real-life matrix. It is sort of a hidden software that drives our social lives. Moreover, rhetoric is an essential skill of leadership. In ancient Greek and Roman times, rhetoric was so important. They trained many leaders with this: Julius Caesar, Cicero, William Shakespeare. Every one of America's founders studied rhetoric, and they used its principles in writing the Constitution. So why do we need to study rhetoric today? Although you are not going to be a salesperson or politician, why do you need to know about persuasion? And what if you don't want to manipulate other people? The thing is, if you don't know rhetoric, you can't see how other people are using it on you. It is a lot easier to be persuaded if you don't know the tools of rhetoric yourself. Besides, rhetoric is not all about persuasion. It's about getting people to like and trust you. It's about writing and speaking well. It's about how to bring people together and inspire them. Anyway, let's get back to the story. Do you still think George beat his father? In reality, by conceding this point, I persuaded him. He might have stood there arguing if I had simply said, "Don't be jerk," and get me some toothpaste. Instead, I made him feel triumphant. Triumph made him benevolent, and that got me exactly what I wanted. I achieved the pinnacle of persuasion, not just an argument, but one that gets an audience. Teenager one at that to do my bidding. No, George, 